Without further ado, I would like to introduce our presenters from the Tucson Unified School District. We are joined today by the Director of Fine and Performing Arts, Dr. Joan Ashcraft, Band Director, Dr. Barbara McLean, and Orchestra Teacher, as well as bassist for the Tucson Symphony Orchestra, Paul Enzi. Thank you for, so much for being here today. Joan, I will go ahead and turn it over to you. Well, we are honored to be with you all today to talk about smart music and the amazing accomplishments that Tucson Unified School District has had. We are in Arizona, the southern part of Arizona, where there's very little rain, but uh, we wanted to quickly go through with you some of the agenda items that we're going to discuss. So Barbara, I was wondering if you could share your screen at this time. All righty. <laughs> and if we could go to slide number two. All right, as Barbara's moving these little black spots out of the way, this is what we're going to try to cover today in 45 minutes. I'm going to give you a little background about TUSD, and then Barbara's going to talk about how we made this all possible, our teacher buy-in. Paul will talk to us a lot about the student buy-in and about our teacher training, and we will hopefully end with some success stories that we have had. Next slide, please. Tucson Unified School District is made up of 220 square miles in the right in the center of Tucson, and we're surrounded by seven other smaller districts. The largest, of course, uh, district is in Phoenix, Mesa Public Schools, and we are the second largest. Uh, next slide, please. So in our district, we have 86 schools, and nine of those are comprehensive high schools. Obviously, uh, our student body population in person now has been fluctuating. We were out for three quarters of the school year, and most of our students are back with us. And you can see the number of teachers that we have in our system as well. Next slide, please. We started with smart music probably about 10 years ago before people were not uh, weren't using technology at all in their classroom. We had some wonderful in person sessions with a smart music personnel. Uh, our district is willing to give that to us as a gift, but frankly, it didn't really take off because of uh, the the lack of buy in from our teachers. And it wasn't until this past year when we were all in a situation we had to do something in order to be able to continue with band, orchestra, choir, mariachi, uh, guitar, piano, and so forth, that we again revisited, thanks to Barbara bringing it to our attention, the, that smart music was certainly the way that we should go. Uh, we've been very pleased. We'll be telling you a little bit about the progress that we've had. But um, just so you know, we have about 100 and 15 music teachers on our staff that take place for the schools. Now you will notice though that Barbara has put up a slide that shows that we have 68 music teacher accounts. And that's because we are not doing this program with our elementary schools. We have 15 elementary schools and a program called Opening Minds Through the Arts, which is an arts integration program we created 20 years ago. That's not really impacted yet by smart music. Uh, we do have 3,100 student accounts and you can see how many classrooms are being impacted. But uh, really this program was absolutely necessary Necessary for us to have success with the children, not only to allow them to play their instruments, to do some ensemble work, but also was a wonderful tool for the social emotional uh, work that we need to do st with students to keep them totally engaged. And next slide, please. All right. <clears throat> well, I'm just going to chat a little bit with you about selling smart music. So. You know, everybody's got bright ideas about how to uh, to do this or that, <clears throat> and our schools are constantly changing. But you do not want to overwhelm someone at this point in the year who is already a little bit overwhelmed. I just want to say that always start with the why. You've got to get them emotionally involved. So when you're talking to people about this idea you have, you have this idea about getting smart music for all your kids and oh that's a wonderful idea but you need to first make sure that you get everybody invested so if you're going to sell this to administrators parents anything you need to get them emotionally invested the way you are so you have some feelings that you're doing you want to um just remember 
I'm not sure what's going to happen next year. I don't know if anybody else is. I'm going to just ask this whole room, uh, would you bet me a year's salary that the pandemic will be over in September? Hmm. Anybody bet me a year's salary? How about a month's salary? Would you bet me one month's salary that this will be over in September? Or would you bet me a week's salary? You know, I'm not sure I would bet anybody more than a dollar. <laughs> that everything will be back to normal in the fall. So that's a big why right now. Why are we looking at a tool that that allows the students to play at home and listens to them? So look at the why. You want to like solve a problem, right? So if you're going to convince someone, you first have to come up with the problem. Well, the pandemic is a problem. It still might be a problem in the fall. That's the greatest number one why for me. You also need to make sure that you express to them it improves something. It's not just cool software. Oh, it is very cool software, but don't start with, oh, this is so cool. You want to improve something for students. And then you want to save teacher time, of course, but nobody in the administration is going to spend a lot of money to save you time. So if you're a teacher, it's unlikely they really care about how much time you have to spend. <laughs> so it's been my experience. So some problems that I think you can solve with smart music, obviously remote teaching, collecting or grading practice cards. These are all good selling points. You can look through these. Uh, I've got students who can't play something as fast as I keep asking them to play it. So smart music allows them to slow down and work from slow to fast and all these other issues. So we wanna solve a problem. So you wanna talk about uh, with the other teachers, what are our problems? And uh, tie that into uh, how you're gonna sell it to each other and your administration or anybody who's gonna pay for it. Uh, it can improve lots of things. So basically these are some things I thought of. Maybe you've got some other ideas that you could uh, put in, in your question area. It, got to improve something or it's not worth the money. But smart music is definitely worth the money for frequency of assessment. Um, one of my pet peeves throughout my entire career is grading music students on just showing up. And we do that because we need lots of students in our room. And when you have lots of students, you can't assess them individually <laughs> without taking, for me, about a week of instructional time just to give individual tests during class time. And of course, there's all these other things. One, one interesting thing, our students at my school played their instruments for the first time last week. In person, I had about eight kids show up. And they played, and I couldn't believe how in tune a B-flat concert scale was. I just couldn't believe it. For the very first time they made sounds in my room, uh, their intonation was much better than before. It normally would be like organized, chaotic and harmonics. <laughs> but uh, so there's a lot of things that it can pr improve and you wanna tie that into your, your talking points and into your proposal. And, and this afternoon, we're gonna talk more about writing that proposal. But, and of course it saves you time on grading and especially individualizing instruction. There's so much you can do with IEPs and smart music. So that's a really big selling point, I think, uh, especially for your admin who is always trying to make sure that they're meeting the needs of every single student. So those are my ideas. Now, uh, Paul is gonna talk to you a little bit about teacher buy-in. Well, hello there. Um, so yeah, I was gonna talk a little bit about about teacher buy-in and i thought i would first start by um just briefly mentioning uh my kind of experience because i had uh, about a year ago never heard of smart music never used it um dr mclean and i got together right when the uh pandemic hit we both teach at the same middle school and we were trying to figure out what to do for that last quarter last year and um i was pretty amazed um that i had not heard about this software yet because um the main thing is that that you can you can actually record yourself and listen to you playing back and that's something i always wish as a professional musician i had started earlier on in my career um i had kind of a a, a crude awakening when i was in masters doing my master's degree 
getting ready for auditions and professional orchestras that uh, you're really not competitive unless you're recording yourself all the time and making sure that you know exactly what's coming out of your instrument because um, your perception uh, of what's coming out might be totally different from what people are hearing. And um, that's something that I always wish I started earlier and smart music just pretty much does that automatically for you, for your students. Your students are listening to themselves and self-evaluating all the time, which is one of the main reasons I, th I really was impressed with smart music. And um, not only that, it, it gives you a real-time grade of the notes you're getting wrong, the notes you're not getting right, rhythms you're getting wrong, etc. So that was my kind of main buy -in. I was like, wow. This is this is what students really need to be doing every day when they uh, when they're starting music anyway. Um, so anyway, uh, there were four main things I wanted to really bring up for uh, for really what how we got some buy in in our district. The first one would be uh, making sure that we got the funding for it, that the district is actually funding um, the subscriptions because we uh, it in our district it'd be very very difficult if not impossible to have students pay for their subscriptions but we were able to make that happen and we got smart music to be a reality for our entire district and it was so great that last year and when the pandemic started um, smart music was actually offering like a free trial period where it, and it, we really got used to using it that last quarter with our students that were coming in for our remote classes when the pandemic first started so we already kind of were getting used to it back then okay and then the next thing we want i wanted to mention was teacher training okay now to me um i'm, I'm somewhat of a tech savvy person i i kind of know how my way around a computer um and smart music for somebody who's computer savvy uh, isn't too difficult once you play around with it to kind of get used to using. But um, there are a lot of, uh, we have a big district, we got a lot of teachers, and not everybody is super um, proficient on a computer. So, um, of course, Smart Music has its Smart Music Academy, which is a great resource um, to do kind of individualized kind of, I need to do this, what, what do I need to do to do that? Um, but at the beginning of this year, we were actually able to um, have some, trainings given by Dr. McLean. She did some uh, some seminars, I think two at the beginning of the year that was just smart music training. And uh, she, we were able to also give her some, some time in her schedule to have office hours for uh, help uh, for any teacher that needed some guidance that wasn't sure, uh, needed to get something done, wasn't sure how to do it. Um, they could uh, go into those office hours and get help with anything that we needed um, and smart music. Um, so that was extremely valuable to have that resource um, there. Uh, the next thing is getting your students kind of buying into using smart music, getting them used to using it, getting them acclimated to uh, the process of using it. So what you really want to do to get your students to start buying into this software is just by starting small. You want to start them off just like this is how you find your assignments. This is how you look in the uh, smart music library to find different things that I'm telling you to look up. Um, you want to start with just ungraded kind of playing with the different tools. One week spend on using the smart music tuner as a string teacher. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to get your students tuned up at the uh, while you're remote. And having that smart music tuner built in is a huge resource to being able to um, making sure that they're getting used to tuning themselves. And uh, those reference pitches in there that you can turn on and off are great for uh, string players in particular. Um, so they're not over tightening their strings and breaking them all the time, etc. You want to get them used to using the looping feature. Um, you want to get them used to uh, watching their grade. Um, as w If you're using the auto grading, you got to get have them get used to seeing what they're doing wrong. They I've got students that will not turn anything in for a week and I ask them what's going on and they're just they're just telling Mr. I'm trying to get 100%. I want all green notes and it's like, "Well, okay, that's great, but I I need your assignment. It's due." <laughs> so that's uh that's another thing, just getting them used to all these different aspects because it is a lot. Um and it's just like anything else you teach, uh, starting off simple and um getting more and more complex as you go along. Uh, and then the final thing is to really make sure that uh, this is all working correctly. We got to make sure that our smart music assignments are a required aspect of our classroom. Um, I know sometimes uh, it, you, it, working through all these technical frustrations, you might not necessarily 
uh, I think it's worth the time to make sure that they're it actually required. You might have these other, uh, um, I guess, different ways of uh, doing the same, accomplishing the same thing, um, such as playing over a Zoom class, playing for you in person if they're kind of in a hybrid schedule, um, etc. But um, it's uh, super important that they are practiced enough with these different tools inside of Smart Music that you're able to make them a required assignment, and it really uh, takes a lot off of uh, the teacher, and especially I think, um, because you get those automatic uh, grading. Your grade book is already uh, all pretty much figured out. You do have to go make sure to go in and listen to them, um, because you know they they find ways of getting 100% without actually playing. <laughs> so you got to make sure you go in to listen to their recordings. But and then the next step of that is making sure that the teacher is giving feedback as they're turning in these assignments, as they're learning to use this tool. You got to give them feedback. Okay, why didn't this go right? What can we do to make sure that your your score is improving this next week, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the main kind of points I kind of wanted to bring up to all of you guys today. Paul, could you just talk quickly about curriculum development, what we did with our curriculum before we go on? Sure, yes. Um, uh, uh, what we did for a part of our proposal to get all of the all, all of our software that we needed to continue music remotely um, this year is we part of what we did is made a curriculum map um, using a method book. Um, traditionally, we've always used essential elements for strings as our method book in TUSD, um, but uh, we did uh, we wanted to use smart music because there's so so much more literature available in their library um, so you can use the uh, essential elements and then have the rest of the library for your concert pieces and, and stuff like that so what we did is we put specific uh, objectives specific learning goals and how those students were going to be assessed um, remotely and we did that for um, books one through three so basically your entire middle school part of maybe half of high school level classes we made this curriculum map that really showed the administrators and the school board exactly what our learning goals were, how we were going to assess them, and how we were going to get results using this software, which really did help um, in uh, garnering our support and getting the funding for this. So. Thank you, Paul. All right. One of the things that I, I uh, distinctly remember happened in 1998 when I went to a NAFME conference in Phoenix, Arizona back in 1998. And I heard John Pierre Lampal, who is a famous flautist, play to a, a background created by Vivace Software. Now Vivace is the forerunner of smart music. It's like the, the mother of smart music. And um, I was blown away. And I immediately purchased Vivace because back then it was replacing Music Minus One. That's pretty old too. But since that time, smart music has gotten so much better. And yes, it's complicated, but any good software is complicated. Adobe products are very complicated. You could study Photoshop for years and still not master it. But mastering smart music is worth the time. So when people tell you they tried it, five years ago, you got to say, well, it's new. It's different. You got to take a look. You got to buy it. The teachers need to understand that it, what problems does it solve and how does it solve them? So that's part of teacher training is making sure that the, the buy-in from the teachers is, is solid enough that gives them confidence because they're not going to be excited about looking like an idiot. So they've got to know what they're doing with smart music. And once you do that, that gives them the confidence to get excited. And if the teacher's excited, the students are excited. And uh, just remember that uh, every software that you use in your district, and you probably have to learn a new one every year, at least we, we'd learned about three or four this year, I'd never heard of, but uh, every time you learn new software, it's gonna take a little time but the payoff is really big, really big. So don't be afraid of that and react to those teachers who did try it 10 years ago with some encouragement and uh, tell them what, what has changed about smart music since then. So um, now we, we thought we would uh, share with you just a little bit of our success stories. Um, 
that these happen because of smart music. What you're going to see is uh, because of smart music. And I'm going to turn it over to Paul for this. Paul, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, so we um, for our virtual ensembles, we took our smart music um, pieces they and we had their the backing tracks uh, that they were able to play to so they felt like they were actually performing in our ensembles and um, we had uh, quite a bit of practicing done in smart music between our our classes so we um, uh, Dr. McLean had uh, about 132 hours of smart music thus far since August uh, they'd done 12 songs they'd done two virtual concerts um, and then my orchestra students have done about 149 hours. I think that's about a week old. There should be a little bit more there now. <laughs> and then um, we had uh, eight full ensemble pieces. Two, uh, we'll have two virtual concerts, one in the, the uh, fall, one in the spring. Uh, we had some, uh, some students who wanted to do some solos and some duets and stuff like that, which is really easy to kind of get uh, edited together um, in post-production uh, for your concerts. We also, um, I was able to organize a district honors orchestra festival where um, we all auditioned uh, virtually to be in this honors orchestra festival festival. And um, we have uh, three pieces that um, they're going to be edited together and will be performed over zoom um, happening a little bit later this month. Um, so that'll uh, all that was really cool. And the, it, it was a lot of fun to see the students um, expressions and like they talk to them after the fact about even though we're doing this all remote, we're uh, we're still able to make music together and bring bring us together um, virtually, even though we can't meet in person. Paul, I'd like to just add to it. Another thing that we did as a result of the work of Barbara and Paul is that we were able to present some of these virtual concerts to the school board throughout the year, and they were very impressed. They were, you know, three minutes long is what we made them, and they were very impressed. And as a result, uh, has have increased funding for the smart music program in the future. Now we're going to play uh, just a couple of uh, very short clips just to show you that um, all of this was possible by smart music. That if we hadn't had smart music, I do not know how we would have done this. But this is from the fall concerts that just about 20 minutes, 20 seconds of each, each group. <laughs> And a little bit from the band, kids. Yeah. So that's just a little bit of what we made possible. And I think, as Paul said, we are so thrilled that we were able to keep the music alive for our students with this software. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Joan. OK, well, I just like to kind of summar uh, summarize some of the things that we were very, very proud of. First of all, as a result of the proposal and the curriculum work that we did, we were the first technology program that the district bought for our students. So that came about very early on. And ever since our superintendent, Dr. Trujillo, has been bragging about it and talking about how proud he is that the board support, supported this program for us. And we've used it in a number of ways. Now, additionally, you heard Paul talk about the intonation he felt was better as a result of the work with smart music and the tuning and so forth. Um, we saw that coming about, uh, we have a program from the Arizona Department of Education called the Arizona Seal of 
arts proficiency. And we actually have quite a process that our seniors in high school have to go through in order to qualify for that. And they receive a very special seal on their diploma. They get scholarships from the University of Arizona in Tucson. If they become music majors, they wear an honor cord in regarding, uh, regarding the fine arts seal. But all of that was impacted by the fact that they had to do these capstone projects which we had to do online and many of the music students that i was just amazed how well that they they played individually and ensemble as a result of their consistent work with the uh, smart music program throughout the year and of course uh, our another success that we had was the ability to assess students to work with them in small groups uh, which was very exciting for our kids and for us. So um, the the final thing that was a huge success for us that we give Smart Music tremendous credit for, for keeping our programs alive. And you see the Barbara created a Music at Home logo. You see underneath our TUSD Fine Arts logo and our Opening Minds to the Arts logo. And here it's Music at Home, keeping the music alive. And that was very, very essential. We kind of branded ourselves with the smart music and the uh, technology programs that we used. But as a result, also, um, just last week, our school board decided to provide $4.5 million for instrument replacement. We have over 13,000 instruments that students can have for the school year rent free uh, since we are a Title I district. Uh, so that was very exciting. And they also added uh, 14 new positions. We're looking for more teachers, music teachers, but also just the expansion of our fine arts program as a result. So I, I cannot thank Smart Music enough for what they have done for our staff and for our, our students. We look forward con to continuing the association with them uh, and to go along with them on, on their journey as they begin, begin to think about what they're going to do next year. By the way, one thing we didn't talk about, but uh, also we're working with Smart Music with mariachi. Uh, we have some very fine mariachi programs in our high schools, middle schools, and elementary schools, and are really hoping to be able to see some of that music used for our mariachi programs. We use it individually, of course, for the trumpets and for the string instruments, but now to move it into that genre will be very exciting. So we thank you for the opportunity to present to you and wondered if you had any questions for us or Barbara or Paul, do you have some closing thoughts to add to mine? No, I don't have any really closing thoughts other than just keep doing what you're doing. Everybody who's uh, attending this session, for any reason, um, you all get a medal from me just for surviving the past 18 months. And uh, uh, now we try to forge and move forward. And I think we're going to need this software for a long time. Yes. Paul, any thoughts? Oh, I just going to echo what you guys said. I think... Uh... Yeah, it's it's been a quite a year and uh, smart music really helped us through this, I think. So um very grateful to have this resource available and looking forward to using it in the future when we're back in the room as well. You know, I thought of another thing that we did. We sent some of these programs that you saw of Barbara's and Paul's. We sent to the, them to the Arizona Department of Education and they actually used part of that these videos for uh, the state conference for Title I. So that's another way that smart music has been able to help us to build that kind of association that has brought our district some prestige. And of course, that makes our superintendent school board very happy. So Greta, I'll turn it over to you if there are any questions that came up for us. Yeah, thank you so much, John. Thank you, Barbara and Paul as well. This has been a lovely presentation. We have had um, two questions pop up. The first is, did you organize the titles or did every music teacher, band teacher, et cetera, um, decide for themselves? And I believe that this is in regards to, you know, I, well, the curriculum across the board, but also in regards to what you did for virtual concerts. Well, I, I would say that um, we did not choose the music for every school. Uh, that was left to the director. And um, some of them, some of them were very set on playing pieces that were not in the Smart Music Library. Hmm. 
And so they were just determined that they were going to play these pieces this year. And they're not in the library, so they didn't use smart music. But um, other than that, it was left to every individual teacher to search the library. And maybe some of them use their own, you know, in-person library, their hands-on sheet music to see what they owned and what they could do in smart music. So they're kind of comparing that. Um, yes. And they're, as they're putting in their budget for next year, their titles, it's a lot of music from smart music that they, they want to add to their library. That they yeah. Well, it's helpful to have the score, even when you're teaching remotely. Um, I really miss having a score in front of me. Um, so I know who to who to yell at, but it's like, OK, uh, I think the library has grown exponentially. I think there's plenty in the library for anyone to choose if you're in band or orchestra, um, for sure. And yeah. the kids love the solos. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I am happy to, to drop in here as well that um, on, on May 3rd, we are greatly expanding the Smart Music Library to include PDF only files, but you will be able to see full scores there. So keep an eye out, that is coming. Um, and we have another question here that we'll close with, unless we've, we've got time for one or two more if someone thinks of one, but let's go on to this question. How would you use smart music when you get to be back in the classroom full time? Oh, golly. Well, that would be easy for me. Um, same assignments we work on in class, they have to work on at home. And one of the problems that you're always solving is what are they doing at home? You know, mm -hmm. if they do play at home, I want them using smart music. So now that we have trained all of these kids about smart music, we don't stop. We just train the new sixth graders or the new fifth graders and they've got access to it and they can practice at home. And I think the long term improvement in playing and intonation, I think, is going to be mind blowing if, if they just stick with it. So I don't want to waste what we've trained them to do. Mm. Um, so every piece we're playing is going to have to be in the smart music library that mm. would be yeah and just that having that practice record i mean you can look I... up and see exactly how much time those students are spending every day if you want um yeah. uh, that's really useful you don't no need for practice cards anymore you know that they get forged by their parents <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, as well as that like the, there's just the training at home practicing with the harmony uh, does a lot for pitch practicing with the rhythm that ha that you know that they're practicing with the metronome when they're practicing with smart music that their their rhythm will be greatly improved okay. and, and then once they get into back into the classroom they're ready to uh pl play at a higher level if they're practicing consistently that way and, yeah. and what i would add if there are any administrators that do evaluations i think what we're going to be doing is adding this as a component of the evaluation system to make sure that the teachers are definitely using smart music. We weren't ready to do that this year because we were all learning about it, but we're ready next year. Certainly, certainly that all sounds wonderful. I love to hear how many different facets of the program y'all are using. Uh, I do thank you all for joining us and bringing your experience today. Thank you, have a wonderful afternoon. Bye everyone.